What's up, Truth? This is Ben, and I'm back. I made a video the other day, I know, kind of talking about how I was back, and let everybody know what's going on, and today, we're going to jump back into the world of the, well, I was going to say back into the world of Christianity and theology and doctrine, but we're not jumping back into that. Uh, we're going to jump back into a channel that I haven't looked at. Whew, boy, it's been a while. I don't know, eight months, nine months, ten months? I can't remember the last time I made a video on this. Uh, and it's the YouTube channel, Bible is Mark of Beast. Yep. I uh, can't remember the guy's name, Harlan, and I can't remember his wife's name, uh, but they're an, an older couple. Uh, he looks like he's, I don't know, maybe 70s. She might be 70s or 60s, and they have a channel, and it has grown to 11,000 subscribers. Wow. <laughs> uh, truth doesn't equate to uh, sub count, apparently. So they have 11,000 subscribers now, and they upload videos, I guess it looks like uh, every day, multiple times a day. I was just taking a look at it briefly. And I kind of just picked a video at random that was recent within the last, uh, probably two weeks, I can't remember, I'll, we'll take a look at it here in a minute, uh, talking about the devil's book or something of that nature. And I listened to about 20 seconds of it, and I thought, okay, let's go ahead and jump back in, because there's going to be nothing new. If you've seen any of my other videos covering these people, uh, I think I've mostly covered his wife, uh, because she mostly appeared in the videos, but he's in this one. The first thing they talk about is the number of denominations. Now, we've already discussed this a million times, drove it into the ground. Uh, we've covered this a lot, and this is, you know, an error that Roman Catholicism makes all the time, you know, this vast, uh, exuberant number of denominations. Yeah, it's 40,000, 50,000. I've heard people say 50,000. Like, there's so many denominations. It's pretty wild stuff. We're all fractured. How could this be? Anyways, yeah, so we're going to get into it, and so I watched about 20 seconds of it. I just stopped. I didn't go any further, so we're going to go ahead and take a look. And I uh, apologize if the audio is not that great. Got my microphone here, my uh, Yeti Blue here, and I'm still working on getting everything perfect and set up and all that. And I'm jumping back into it, so you'll have to uh, feel forgive me. And got some new ink right here. It's actually not new. Uh, my son had a bunch of stick on tattoos, so we all got one today. It's very exciting. That's a uh, toad, and if you can't see, that's you can barely see it. That's the uh, mushroom block. Uh, my son said, "Hey, Daddy, why is there a clue on your arm?" Anyways. So let's go ahead and watch some of this. We'll see if we get all the way through it. Probably not. And then uh, we're going to address this. And then probably in the future, within a week or so, I want to address Great Light Studios, who's been uh, making a lot of videos on Calvinism lately and some of the errors that I see in his videos. Uh, but also some of the things I like about his channel, actually. See, it's possible to disagree with people and still promote them in some ways. Okay, let's take a look at this video. All right, so here we are, the uh, Bible is Mark of Beast YouTube channel. Uh, this was posted 11 days ago, at least at the time of the filming of this uh, video. So this will probably come up a few days after, maybe the same day, we'll see. Uh, but yes, yeah, so the name of this video, and I got the cool thumbnail, uh, the Bible is an idol, the Bible is the devil's book. Uh, the Bible is the devil's book is the name of the, uh, the video. And so we're going to go ahead and uh, get into this and see how far we get. And let's see how many errors we can correct. Now, obviously, this is a couple that is like a lot of people out there. Uh, I've made several videos critiquing them. I've put myself in their comments all the time. They just don't care. They're not interested in truth. They're not interested in being real. They're not interested in history or textual criticism or Greek or any of that. You know, the patristics, they don't care about any of that because they've got their truth, whatever it is that they think it is, and they are sticking to it. And anything that is contrary to that truth, it must be a lie and it's irrelevant. Those people can be mocked and discarded and kind of thrown aside. And you don't don't even waste your time listening to them because they have nothing to say. Sounds like a lot of people today. So let's go ahead and start it. Uh, and I am stepping it up to uh, 1.25 for the playback speed. Pull that from uh, James White. It's just easier. It's a little quicker. It kind of helps with the ums and the ahs and stuff like that. You can probably do that to my YouTube channel videos and uh, get rid of some of the uh, flat air time. So, let's uh, go ahead and start this and see how far we get. The Bible is the mark of the beast. And I'm going to tell you a thing today that's very powerful for sure. You've got to turn this thing around. This thing here is the devil's book. They say it's God's book, but it's not God's book. It's the devil's book. The devil uses this all the time. That's true. The devil does twist scripture quite often. Uh, we actually see that when Jesus is in the wilderness fasting for 40 days, and we see that the devil tries to take scripture out of context, which that's why we always drive home context, 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 very important. You need to find out what's being said, where it's being said, the society that's being said in, the group it's being said to, who's speaking, who's being spoken to. These are very important things. So yes, the the 
the devil does try to twist, uh, try to do, if I can speak, try to twist scripture quite often. So that part is true, not for the reasons he thinks. Um, but yeah, that is true. 41,000 different denominations uses that book. 41,000. <laughs> See, this is where I got, this is where I got before I even stopped and said, let's film. Uh, 41,000. So I'm looking at myself down in the corner. Look up here. 41,000 different denominations. Now, I'm curious where he gets this number from. He probably heard it from someone, I don't know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. And he just said, 41,000. Oh, my gosh. And then that's just the number he stuck with in his mind. Uh, you know, the old, uh, don't mind the thunder, it's raining here. The old Roman Catholic one, I think it initially was 31,000. And they got that from uh, the Cyclopedia Britannica, I think. Uh, I documented it in one of my videos way back camera off the top of my head. Uh, obviously ridiculous, inflated, a preposterous number, tens of thousands of denominations. Uh, what they actually mean is that if you want to even, t let's say, let's take 41,000. I don't even know how many churches are in the U.S. I also talked about this in that video. If there were 41,000 churches, maybe they're including independent churches right, who don't claim a denomination, right? A lot of charismatic churches are independent, which doesn't, very much excite me, but you know, we'll take the, ind the independent ones, and then there might be some independent fundamentalist Baptist churches, right? Some IFB churches that aren't part of the SBC, which I totally get that the SBC is kind of burning and falling apart right now. So, even if we did that, I don't even know if there's 41,000 churches in the United States, but somehow there's 41,000 denominations. Now, I've asked in the comments before here, and I've asked in Roman Catholic videos, hey, can you substantiate that number? No. Hey, where'd you get that number? I heard it. Who well, told you that? I don't remember. Well, you should stop saying that. Well, it doesn't matter what you think, right? That's kind of the mentality. And that's what uh, this gentleman and this lady's mentality is, is. It doesn't matter. They're just here to make videos and spread whatever truth it is that they think they're spreading. Okay, so we're 25 seconds in and already got an error that I've corrected many times. Two billion, three hundred million people uses that book. It ain't God's book. Jesus don't use book. He uses Jesus doesn't use books. Um, well, I think history in the New Testament would disagree, obviously. I'm trying to get sponsored by Monster here. I put that in the background. So you got to get that in. If you want to get sponsored, you have to have things in frame. Uh, make sure to tag Monster in the comments for me. Jesus didn't use the Bible. Well, he read from the Old Testament a lot, which was the Bible of the New Testament church, the Septuagint, right? The Greek rendering of the Hebrew Old Testaments. He quotes from the uh, Old Testament a lot in the Septuagint. He teaches and preaches from it. I mean, we have him reading from the Isaiah scroll when he tells everybody who he is. So, I mean, well, yeah, Jesus, he uses the Bible all the time, and he still uses it today, but he always said, have you not read? Is it not written? Have you not heard? And then he talks about the Old Testament. So that's error number two. Holy Ghost, control his people. If you say, Philip, Join yourself to that chair. Peter, go to Cornelius' house. Paul, go to Macedonia. And he'd be speaking to his people. He don't speak to them through a book. That's the devil's book. How do you know that these people were spoken to by the Holy Spirit? Where did you find that out? Oh, because it's written in that book that you're holding in your hand. So you read that book, found these things out, which you wouldn't know about if that book didn't exist. You wouldn't know the Holy Spirit exists. You wouldn't know about the Father and the Son and the Triune God and their attributes and their differences and the different ways that they interact and the roles that they inhabit, right? John 14, very big for distinguishing the roles of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the Trinity. Yeah, you wouldn't know about any of that if it wasn't for the Bible. So he reads the Bible, takes what he wants out of it, and then uses that to say, you can't trust this book. A little ironic. 50 seconds in. The devil took the letters, the old scrolls of the saints of God. And compiled it into this book and authorized it. It's basically. I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to, uh, you know, I'm not a prophet, nor am I the son of a prophet, but I'm almost certain there's going to be a mention. <laughs> and I, I hope I'm right. I haven't watched this yet, but I'm, I'm, I'm almost certain that she's going to reference Constantine and how he had the Bible uh, made and the sword and how he picked the books that went in and didn't. There's going to be a Council of Nicaea reference in here. I'm almost positive. I'm. Uh, like I said, I'm not a prophet or a son of a prophet, but I'm pretty sure it's coming. True history, even though it's been interpolated and extrapolated and mistranslated, but Satan made it into this book and uses it for evil. So here we go. Now notice Satan in the book. He has shows up more times than God does. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. Now is that God's book or the devil's book? 
That's the devil's book. I showed. <laughs> Maybe you can let me in the comments below. I don't. <laughs> I don't understand this connection. Um. And the servant said unto the woman, you shall surely not, or sorry, let me use the King James. And the servant said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. Does that say dies? I think there's an S. It might be period. Sorry. Genesis 3, 4. So this is their proof text to show that the Bible is the devil's book because it records the fall of man in the garden. Interesting. Talking about in interpretations being weird. Uh, this is a pretty weird one. Devil get me. How about that? You said, wait a minute, you know, this is the word of God. This is the Bible. This is holy. This is the devil's book. Constantine, who was a sun god worshiper, murdered his wife and everything. He's one got this book up. And Queen James got it up. Talk about it. Man, you know, I almost feel like a charismatic, like I'm slinging prophecy over here. It's not real prophecy, but... I'm I'm pretty good at predicting. It's it's not because I have any you know special revelation from on high or that the Holy Spirit gave me that. Uh, it's, it's just pattern recognition, right? It, uh, I have to admit that I'm using a materialistic, uh, physical means of interpreting and looking at history, their history specific, uh, to find out what they're going to say. And this, by the way, is how why they have eleven thousand subscribers and however many videos it is that they have, because they just keep churning out videos with the same information. They just keep repeating it, and then new people come in, but and then they say, oh, this is weird. You know, maybe apostates or people who are really uh, immature in their faith and in knowledge of Christianity and scriptures and things like that. And so they'll come in to see this and be like, oh, my gosh, this is wild. Or maybe they left one of the Christian cults, and they're, you know, it's kind of a, they don't know, they don't really know anything about anything in Christianity. And uh, so they come and watch this, and they go, oh, these people are different. They're saying that they still kind of want to be part of Christianity, but they don't really trust it, or they, you know, they apostated, or they fell away or something. And so they cling on to stuff like this. But I I'm willing to bet that their 11,000 subscriber count doesn't equate to the same amount of views, right? Like, there there isn't 11,000 subscribers and 11,000 views on every video, because every video is the same. There's not much new being said, and they don't interact with anybody. Uh, in any meaningful way. They haven't interacted with any of my videos in any way. But like, I mean, like I said, it's probably been, I don't know, I haven't watched their stuff in a while. My last video on them was a year ago, maybe. I'd have to go back and look and nothing's changed. This is exactly the same. Just a lot of just wild accusations, weird interpretations. It's just very odd. It's bizarre to watch. And, but he just kind of, and we've all met people like this, right? And I am making an assumption I think it's a fair assumption is that when you meet a person like this who is so dismissive and so ignorant, but they're so confident in what they believe, that it's like throwing a water balloon at a brick wall. It just bounces off. It breaks. You can't get through it. There's no penetrating it. So the only way is to correct it. And that's why I do these videos. I don't think I'm ever going to reach through to this gentleman and his wife. I wish I could. It'd be great if they were to interact specifically with anything I say. They won't. Uh, because they just don't do that. A lot of people don't do that. But uh, I do it for people that come across my videos. You know, I'd like to spread truth in some way, shape, or form. And the best way to spread truth is to correct error. So, uh, yeah, it was just interesting. I was glad I could see uh, the Constantine reference. I knew it was coming. And obviously, the Council of Nicaea, 325, where Constantine had nothing to do with the formation of the canon. Anybody that's studied history knows that. A simple Google search, or a DuckDuckGo, because we don't like Google, but we don't really like DuckDuckGo. Anyways, yeah, a simple search will show that Constantine had nothing to do with formation of the canon. A minute and 45 in. Let's keep going. He authorized it. Had 47 different scholars uh, translated from Greek, and he used up-to-date words and interpolated it. So this is the devil's book. The devil's book. Remember that. The devil uses this more than God ever will. This is just a history. Jesus uses the Holy Ghost. Actually, <laughs> Jesus uses the Holy Ghost. Remember product placement. Again, I just wish I knew where they got this information from. Jesus uses the Holy Ghost because they will pick and choose parts of Scripture to use. And when you go, well, how do you know or how do you justify that? They go, well, just because the Holy Spirit told me. But then you go, well, how do you know that you're right and somebody else is wrong who claims something else? Then what do you say? And if they say they have the Holy Spirit telling them something, well, how do you prove you're wrong? Well, because he's really talking to me. Well, how do you know they're not talking to them? Because I said so. It's like, yeah, that's deep.
it's not only not the word of God, it's the word of the devil because it's the spirit that is speaking it, the one that's translating and saying what it means, whose word it is, and the devil's the one using it. Now here was Job, who showed up when the sons of God was there talking. And Satan showed up, and the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. What's Satan telling the Creator? He's telling our Holy Father, I rule the earth. So who rules? He rules the earth. Isn't it interesting that in that passage in Job, he comes before the throne of God to accuse people? So even Satan goes before the Lord to his kingdom, to the throne of God, to accuse people, but he doesn't get to just go there whenever. He has to be allowed to come, and God allows him to come before him and speak, and Satan, if he was the ruler of this world, truly like had true power over this world, why would he be going before God and accusing people? Why would he be going before God to ask permission to hurt Job and his family? Right, so yeah, Satan has a lot of power. He is the king of this world in a sense, but that's only because God has allowed it for a time. And he is limited by God. He says, you can hurt his family, do whatever, but you cannot harm Job. So God puts restrictions on him. And so God is obviously the king of this world and of the heavenly realm, but he has let Satan go for a time with limited power. But again, context doesn't really matter to these people. It's find a verse pull it out, use it for whatever means, and then throw the rest of it away. But don't worry, the Bible, you can't trust it. You, you can because it was compiled by Constantine and Queen James. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and use the Bible that you can't trust in order to prove our point. I must say, though, that it, they did, it looks good, though. Uh, they did take, obviously, a lot of time uh, to print this off and cut them out on the white strips. You can see they glued it to the paper there, and they highlighted Job 2-2. So that, I mean, they put some time into it. I mean, I'm assuming, you know, they're they're a little older, they're probably retired, so they have a lot of free time. So, props for uh, for effort. Satan rules the earth. I go to and fro through the earth. And that's what he does today, and he uses this to control it with. This is the devil's book. He shows up more in it than God does. When, when Satan couldn't stop the move of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Sorry, that's just a little funny. They, uh, she, like, they keep looking off to the side. You know, she keeps looking at that because they probably have, they got like a wife. It's almost like they got a director, like with cue cards. They keep looking at, at different notes. <laughs> it's, just, it's just funny. I'm, I don't know why it's funny. I mean, I've done that too. I'll, I'll have, like you can't see, but off to the side here, I'll have my whiteboard sometimes with my notes and I'll peek over. But it's just, <laughs> you know, it's almost like a full production going on. I don't know. It's just a little funny. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. All right, let's go. And Jesus getting in his people. He had to do something to deceive the people, so he had to actually emulate Jesus and become Jesus. And with Constantine, he started it. He actually changed Yeshua into Jesus and, and all the holidays into the sun god. And, and it's actually the devil's word. Yes. All right, now when the devil... Never mind, yeah. I've commented on that before, holidays and blah, blah, blah. And Constantine really has a lot of power in the eyes of people who don't really understand history. A lot more than he actually had. Talking to Jesus, he shows up more than God does, you know. And he's talking to Jesus, and we're going to quote this verse in this chapter uh, in a book that you can't trust. The devil was talking to Jesus, but he tell him, he said, And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give you, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and whomsoever I will, I will give it. Who did Satan say the world was delivered to? To himself. To himself, that's yeah. right. He's the God of this present world. He didn't create it. But he took it over through Adam and through man. So Satan said, I walk to and fro throughout the earth. They do everything I tell them to do. He said, all this is mine, Jesus. If you bow, bow, bow down and worship me, I'll give it to you. That was the devil. Now whose world is this? It's the devil's world, and this is his book. If this was God's world, it would be wonderful and beautiful. They wouldn't have all the heinous crimes and all the super rich and then the super poor and all the confusion and filth and, and destroying of the earth and the people. Why? I've heard this kind of argument from other people. Um, Ironically enough, from I think like Bart Ehrman and people would be like, well, if Jesus was real, right, and from like a non-belief standpoint, if Jesus was real, well, then why is there suffering and pain and unfairness and, you know, rich and poor, like they said, and crime and rape and murder? Uh, as if that isn't addressed quite thoroughly in Scripture. It is weird. Like they say, well, because there is bad. And it's from like an atheistic perspective. Well, since there is evil, then that proves that God doesn't exist. Since he's all good and all righteous, uh, then he can't exist, right? 
but so then they're paralleling that kind of from a weird kind of sub Christian perspective, like, well, you know, if God was ruler of this world, then there shouldn't be all this, but it's quite obvious why there, I mean, if they had just read the rest of Genesis <laughs> instead of just that one verse, they would have seen the fall of man and they're thrown out of the garden and sin has entered into the world through one man. And so it's not like this isn't covered in scripture. So I don't understand why they think this is an argument for why Satan is the ruler of this world. And somehow then this is his book. Here we go. Now this one here is plain as cornbread. Uh, then entered Satan into Judas, surname Issachar, being of the number of the twelve. What did Satan do to Jesus, his apostles? He just get in and get him to do his will. Get in Judas, yeah. He got in Judas and got him to do his will. And Jesus told Peter, said, I said, Satan has desired to have you, Peter, to shift you like wheat, but I prayed for you. I hadn't prayed for Peter, he got in him. So he got in Judas. That's in the Lord's apostles. Satan is a spirit, but he works through the flesh and he tempts people in the flesh. We're in the flesh, we've been sold into sin, but when we're regenerated by the Holy Spirit, we no longer live after the flesh, but Satan's always trying to tempt us in the flesh. Yeah. You know, these people sure ascribe a lot of authority and power to Satan that he doesn't really have. Uh, yes, he did tempt Peter, but uh, he obviously didn't enter or break Peter, and we know that. And Jesus told him that he would be tempted. And he did enter Judas, but that's because God allowed it, right? If you read in the book of Acts, that Judas was predestined for this very thing, right? He says it'd be better if he'd not been born several times, but it's not like this wasn't known. Like, this is part of Jesus' plan. And when they were sitting at the Last Supper, Jesus even looks to him and says, go do what it is that you have to do. So it's not like he didn't know what Judas was doing. It didn't, it's not like he didn't know it was part of his plan for all time. He knew Judas was going to do this a long time ago, like before the creation of the world. I should say without the world, right? Because there was no time before creation. That's when you start getting to weird philosophical ideas, right? So when there was no world and there were no human beings, God knew what Judas was going to do because it was part of his plan for mankind. The redemption was prophesied. So again, this ascribing power to Satan to overrule everything as if he's the king of this world and God is powerless against him, this really, again, doesn't have anything to do with this being the devil's book or not. The devil's book. Devil's book. The devil uses the book to keep you in the flesh and to control you with the book and keep you out of the Holy Spirit, which is the only way to serve God. And you go to the Holy Ghost people. Read the first uh, verse in uh, the book of Luke and the first verse in the book of Acts. And this is a, a man, I don't, they don't give his name, I think it's Luke. But he said, he said, dear Theolopus, he was writing to Theolopus of the things that he had seen, people that was eyewitnesses. See, they wasn't there writing Jesus' words down when he talked. So read that. And it's just like writing a letter to somebody. It was his words. It wasn't God's words. He was just telling what he had seen and heard and heard what people said. So he just wrote it down. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Now the devil's cast out into the earth. Jesus is in heaven. Jesus ain't on earth. He's in heaven with God. Who's cast out to the earth? And who goes the earth with this thing right here? When you see Benny Hinn and all the planters and Osteen and all them with this book, you know that's the demons. They hypnotize people out of this book. This is the devil's book. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about Osteen and Jesse Duplantis and uh, the TBN crowd. To say that they use scripture properly and since it's the devil's book and they use it, that's how they hypnotize people is, uh, whew. wow, that's a pretty wild statement. Uh, Joel Osteen doesn't actually use scripture. He probably, uh, well, I shouldn't, that, that might be a bit of a stretch. Uh, I would be very surprised if he has read the entirety of scripture in quite a long time. In fact, I've read uh, one of his books at least, watched multiple of his sermons. I've watched Jesse Duplantis and Creflo Dollar and um, yeah, Kenneth Copeland, unfortunately, a lot of times. One of my eating critiquing videos, you should go that watch it. Uh, they don't use scripture uh, to promote scripture. They don't exegete the text. They don't read large chunks of it. They don't do Bible studies. What they do is they will use a verse here or a verse there. And if you ever watch Joel Osteen, uh, he'll come up and he has a topic that's there to make you feel good. And then he will go, or somebody who works for him, will go and find a verse that kind of sort of complements that. He'll go, God wants you healthy. He wants you feeling good. He doesn't want you to be sick. And here's a single verse about somebody being healed. 
And if you will just believe it and say it, then you too can affirm this in your life. And uh, then you can what's that, actuate it. That's a fun word. You can actuate this in your life. You have to actuate the power of the Holy Spirit. God's here for you, man. I mean, eh, but, you know, I, I don't expect people like this to be able to make that proper distinction because they don't care because they, they don't realize that they're a fringe group as well. Right, like, yeah, Joel Osteen and all them had the mega churches and the money and the TBN and the contracts and the television and the sets and blah blah blah, and the books. But these people are just as much an error as he is. See, they're just as bad as him because those people are almost beyond correction because of the power and the money and the status they have. But these people are almost beyond correction because of how arrogant they are, and they've, con like I said, uh, convinced themselves. That they're correct, so anything they just, it just bounces off them. So they're they're uncorrectable in a different way than Joel Osteen is. But both of these groups are an error, and to somehow say that Joel Osteen and all them are the way they are because the scriptures <laughs> is the devil's bible. That's pretty pretty interesting accusation. Not founded. And for the flesh, you can see it. They preach for money, and they teach you that if you send them money, that you can have all what you want according to your own flesh. Now look at the lush, lavish lifestyles they live. They're living after the flesh. They're doing what he tempted to Jesus to try to get Jesus to do. All right. Now listen to this. There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels. See, there's Satan fighting against Michael. Can you imagine him standing up against Michael? He's powerful. He owns this world. He's going to be like the most high God and set upon the, the sides of you know, it is, he mentioned something earlier that I thought about. Isn't it interesting that he just said, didn't he say the Bible is just a history book written down by Ben? Uh, didn't he say that it's not, uh, it wasn't inspired by the Holy Spirit in any way, shape, or form? So how is it that a book that was written just as a history book covering what's going on in the world of men, how does that record the war in heaven between Michael and his angels and Satan and his angels? How did they record that? I hadn't really thought about that now. Like, the whole book of Revelation, for the most part, uh, should be not quoted by these people, at least, because they feel it's the devil's book. It's just a history book. There's errors in it. So why are they quoting Revelation, which is obviously a vision given to somebody, a prophetic vision, a supernatural vision, about something that he didn't see if it's just a history book? Interesting thought. Uh, it's almost like they're being a little hypocritical and not consistent. Weird. No, he he thinks. <laughs> so you see, he was fighting with Michael and his angels. Yep, and he uses the book. He made the book, so the book is his. Even though the book was constructed out of letters from true saints of God, but Satan made it into his book. All right, and this, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. Now look at that. Satan was making war with the saints, and what did he do? How did he overcome them? With this book right here. Yeah. He overcome them with this book. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And Jesus don't have power over all. Some, some of these nuts says Jesus ruled with a rod of iron. Well, that's a different saying. It says right here in Revelation that Satan ruled. Now listen to this. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. He's overcome all these church people with this book. And power was given to him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Okay, so let's just, let's just jump to the... Uh... Let's go to the scriptures real quick. Let's jump into it. Is that Revelation 13? It's a Bible gateway. It's pretty cool. Go to the English Standard Version because we're good Christians. Revelation 13. Let's jump in there. It's, uh, oh, that's nice. Hey, make it bigger. There we go. Uh, extra large because I'm getting old and I can't see. Uh, to do Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, I'll start in verse 5. Uh, and the beast was given a mouth uttering haughty and blasphemous words, and it was allowed to exercise authority for 42 months. So this is talking about, depending on your view of eschatology, about the end times. So this isn't talking about all of humanity, all of the world, for all time, since the fall in the book of Genesis. This is talking specifically about the tribulation, the last seven years, right? Depending on eschatology. So this doesn't pertain to all of humanity forever. But again, just pick a verse here, pick a verse there. Uh, verse 6, it opened its mouth to utter blasphemies against God, blaspheming his name and his dwelling. That is, those who dwell in heaven. Also, it was allowed. Isn't it interesting that, like I said in the book of Job, Satan has to have permission from God. So even, right, like if he's the ruler of this world, why does he have to ask permission from God for any of this? 
uh, it was allowed to make war on the saints and to conquer them, and authority was given it over every tribe and people and language and nation, and all who dwell on the earth will worship it. Everyone whose name has not been written before the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb who was slain. So uh, he has permission and authority over every tribe, people, language, and tongue who were not the elect of God. Isn't it interesting? All who dwell on the earth will worship it. Everyone whose name has not been written before the foundation of the world in the book of life. So before the foundation of the world, right, before predestined election, we're gonna, you know, not going to jump into that. But it's pretty plain right here that so all the ones who are not saved carnal people, yeah, he has authority over them. But this doesn't say anything about having authority over Christians. And even if it did, it would only be in the seven-year tribulation or for 42 months. So half the tribulation, right, that three and a half, three and a half thing. Uh First night, if anyone has an ear, let him hear. If anyone is to be taken captive, to captivity he goes. If anyone is to be slain with the sword, with the sword must he be slain. Here is a call for the endurance and faith of the saints. So it's actually kind of a, a word of encouragement for the endurance and the faith of the saints. So eisegesis to the biggest degree. Um, not much in here, but uh, what are we at? Eight minutes and 12. We'll just go ahead and finish the video out. Um, sorry this one's a little bit longer, I know, but if, if you watch this video... And this is probably not a good way for me to self-promote myself. Uh, if you've watched this video, you don't need to watch any of my other videos where I've talked about these people. You really don't. Well, I mean, you, you could. You could go back and I'd probably delve a little bit more into Constantine and the Council of Nicaea 325 and the Edict of Milan or the Edict of Tolerance in 313 and Constantine's role and blah, blah, blah. Uh, there, there might be some more of that. But like I said, it's probably been eight months to a year since I've watched their videos. And there's nothing new that they're putting in here that I haven't covered before. There's absolutely nothing. It's all just the same. They just turn their ears off and open their mouths and spit out ignorance and hate and hypocrisy and irony, and it doesn't matter. And they're obviously uh, taking the Word of God and taking verses out to support themselves and then turning their right head around and saying, see, none of this is trustworthy, but except for the verses that we're going to use to support our position. So like I said, and this is a good tactic. If you ever see anybody quote a verse like this, just go ahead and read the entire chapter that that verse is couched in. And it, it should be pretty easy to pick out where the error is coming from. All right, about three more minutes. Let's go ahead and knock this out. Satan has power over all nations, kingdoms, and tongues. So this is Satan's book. This is not Jesus' book. He has power over him through deceit, through delusion, and through their will because they want the flesh. Now Jesus has more power. He can destroy the earth any time the Father says he can, but he can't make the people love him and do his will. Satan has done that because... They Jesus can't make people love him and do his will. He doesn't have... Let's just hear that again. Uh, again, I've noticed people ascribe a lot of authority to Satan and not a whole lot of authority to Christ. Now, Jesus has more power. He can destroy the earth any time the Father says he can, but... He can't make the people love him and do his will. Satan has done that because they... Right, so he has the authority to destroy the world and the universe. And the, he has, you know, he can shut it down, right? Like powering down a computer. It's like he's playing the game The Sims, right? You ever played The Sims before where uh, you have the power kind of, sort of, a little bit over what's going on in the environment. You can build houses and maybe move structures and upgrade things. But, but The Sims just kind of do what they want. It's almost as if there's something else controlling them. Well, that's that's what it's like here on Earth. Like Jesus can destroy things, and he can shut the universe down and turn it off and destroy it if he wants, but he he can't do anything to men, really, right? He, he just doesn't have that power. Satan has a power over uh, your free will or your not free will, I guess, depending on how they would look at uh, your will. And uh, yeah, so Jesus is kind of powerless. Satan's really the th the authority figure here. Yeah, that's that's I was going to say biblical, but that's that'd be a waste of time to say that. Of the flesh. So this has become the devil's book. That's why this is the devil's book, because the devil compiled it and authorized it to take people away from the power of God. So then when all is said and done, and Jesus makes up his jewels, this book right here will have taken more people from God than all the other idols, Baal or, or Rapine, any of them, Dragon. This will take more people from God than anything else, because they said it was God's book. It's the devil's book. Get that in your thick skulls. That's the devil's book. Thank you, Jesus, for the Holy Ghost. Well, there you go. Thank you, Jesus, for the Holy Ghost. Um, 
we don't live in reality. We make things up and we don't waste our time looking at criticisms because we're above that and we're older than younger people that talk to us. So we don't, I don't know. Yeah, there was nothing there. Nothing new. Um, I guess we can uh, let this play in the background. I'll turn the uh, volume down and maybe there'll be something else. Yeah, come to Jesus. Well, it'd be good to come to Jesus. Um, come to Jesus with your heart. That's that's great. I don't know how they know that uh, you need to come to Jesus with your heart. Um, close the book. All right. They had some cool effects here. They're they're a little old, but I mean they, you know, they put some time into it. You can tell. Uh, yeah, it's good. To, you know, when you come back and there's there's been no change. Like with some people, you just expect it, right? They just they are what they are. They are who they are. Uh, they don't care about correction. They don't care about history or eisegesis versus exegesis. Um, they don't care about that's nah, distracting. We're going to shut that down. Let's go ahead and make me big again. Yeah, people about this uh, that like to say those they don't care about truth. That's just the way it is, unfortunately. And there are a lot of people out there like that. Some people uh, are more creative at the way they disguise they're not caring about truth. Uh, they didn't, you know, they must have mentioned uh, Osteen and Duplantis and things like that. Now, those people, I, I got to give it to them, they're much better at uh, not being truthful and making it look good, right? Because they, you know, he's got the suit and the hair and the perfect teeth and the church and, you know, they have bands and the music and, you know, Osteen packs out a stadium every Sunday and Duplantis uh, flies in jets and Creflo Dollar wants a jet. I don't know if he ever got it. I don't think he did, right? And Kenneth Copeland has a fleet of jets in an airport. Good Lord. So, yeah, I mean, they, they do make it look better, but these people right here aren't any less in error than Osteen is. That's just the way it is. So, like I said, uh, if you want to, you watch this video, maybe go into their comment section and post a link to this video and say, hey, can you actually interact with anything this guy says? They won't, but you, you never know. It's possible. You know, I've been gone a while. Maybe I came back and they were just waiting for me to come back. <laughs> uh, and, you know, be respectful when you go over there. And just maybe be like, hey, can you tell us why it is that you think this? Can you provide some historical proof? Can you use scripture in context? Can you not use scripture and then use the idea that scripture is not trustworthy after you just use the scriptures? Something like that. All right, guys, it's good to be back. If you have any topics you want me to look at, put them down below because I want to, you know, launch into stuff uh, that you guys want to hear about. Uh, I have been thinking about doing something about the Great Light Studios, this YouTube channel. Oh, I'm going to mention this at the end. So this is interesting. So unlike these people, from what I've seen from the gentleman at Great Light Studios, um, he's got an interesting YouTube channel. I came across him because of his talks on the World Mission Society Church of God, the WMSCOG, which is a, a Christian cult that came out of Korea. It's moved to the United States. It's expanded from the West Coast primarily. Now it's into the East Coast. And he does a lot of videos with ex-members of the World Mission Society Church of God. And they're interesting. I, I like his interviews. He, he does good interviews and he lets the people speak. You know, and he helps find errors. And so I like that. And so I would promote his channel, at least in terms of those videos. Now, he also does a lot of anti-Calvinism videos. He does interviews with Leighton Flowers. He goes, he goes, you know, you guys don't understand predestination and, well, this is election. And he's been kind of, he's on a, he's on a roll with Calvinism videos right now. Um, I've been thinking about addressing those, but I've addressed Calvinism stuff in my videos sometimes. And it is interesting, and I mean, it gets views and subscribers, which is, I mean, it's nice. It, you know, it's nice for me and makes me feel good on the inside, I guess. But I don't know if that's really an area that I need to put a lot of time into, unless you guys want me to. Because I don't want to just spend time in areas like that, because, you know, the the whole that whole debate that, you know, Leighton Flowers and James White, they've gone back at time and time again, and Leighton Flowers. And if you like Leighton Flowers, that's fine, but... It, I would like to, could you admit that he has a fixation with Calvinism that he is, might be a little unhealthy? Maybe just a little bit. Uh, I know James White interacts with him with a lot, but he doesn't, it's usually just because Leighton Flowers says things about him and he's responding and he kind of stopped, at least from what I, I've seen, stopped responding to him directly and going after him because it just seemed like a waste of time because Leighton Flowers doesn't, at least from my perspective, uh, convey Calvinism correctly. He puts forth what he thinks Calvinism is and then attacks that. And you may agree with that, disagree with that. That's okay. So uh, if you want more videos on Calvinism or if you want me to interact specifically with any of Great Light Studios stuff on that, uh, let me know in the comments down below. If you want me to look at something else totally different, let me know about that too. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next one. Take care.